The Black is Back Coalition uh, is, I believe, uh, one of the most important uh, uh, organizations that uh, we've seen uh, in this country uh, in particular uh, since the 1960s. It has uh, gone against the conventional uh, wisdom about uh, the ability of, of African groups and personalities coming from uh, different ideological and political streams to be able to unite uh, to do uh, work together. The fact is that the Black is Back Coalition is comprised of uh, a wide array of different uh, organizations, uh, personalities uh, from throughout the African community. They are Muslims and, and Christians uh, in terms of their political, in terms of the ideological influences that uh, motivate them uh, to participate in this work. Uh, they are social Democrats, uh, liberals. Uh, they are uh, revolutionaries, African internationalists, communists, pan-Africanists, uh, nationalists, uh, you name it. There are a huge array of different uh, forces uh, within the African community uh, uh, has come together to build uh, the Black is Back Coalition. Um, it is because uh, despite all of the things uh, that distinguish us as different, uh, the one significant uh, thing that unites us is the fact that all of us believe in self-determination. African people being a self-determining people in control of our own destiny. Um, I think that I should also acknowledge that the existence of the Black is Back Coalition um, is a criticism. It is a criticism of the traditional uh, Negro leadership uh, in this country, and it is, a tr it is a criticism of the white left uh, in this country, particularly those sectors that constitute what they call uh, the peace or the anti-war movement. It is something that was the, the founding of this coalition in 2009 was something that uh, was absolutely necessary for us to do. It was necessary for us to do, uh, uh, especially with the selection of the white ruling class uh, in this country of Barack Hussein Obama as U.S. President. Uh, it was necessary because for many of us, though not all of us who came together in the coalition, Many of us understood uh, that the selection of Barack Obama as President of the United States was a means by which the U.S. ruling class uh, was attempting to uh, camouflage, to disguise uh, the role of U.S. imperialism in permanently dominating the peoples of the world. Uh, we recognized that it was a desperate effort uh, by a U.S. imperialism that was losing on every front in the world uh, under the immediate leadership of the previous administration of George W. Bush, uh, but that had been losing uh, for years and years and years as the vast majority of the peoples uh, around the world upon whose uh, oppression and resources of Europe, uh, North America, of white people in the world, did not come about because of the beneficence of some god who saw in Europe, North America, and white people uh, a goodness that could not be perceived in the rest of us. But in fact, uh, Marx characterized this wealth, uh, power, resources as something stemming from what he characterized uh, as the primitive accumulation of capital. He said that capitalism uh, happened uh, as a consequence of slavery, of colonialism, of attack on the indigenous peoples uh, here in this country, the theft of the wealth and resources that went to feed and grow a Europe prior to then, which was starving, disease-ridden, and otherwise problematic. In fact, Marx characterized this thing, primitive accumulation, as having the same role uh, in, in, in political economy as original sin in theology. 
He said, this is the foundation. This is the starting point. This is how it all got started. Capitalism, if you will, was born at the expense of the happiness and resources of the vast majority of the people around the world, which is why you can find the vast majority of the people around the world in a permanent state of resistance and why it has become necessary at this time in history for a permanent state of warfare to be waged against almost everybody on earth by America and Europe. So we talk about war and peace. Uh, we're talking about the, the development of a, of a social system, of a capitalism, of an imperialism that came as a consequence of the theft even of this land upon which we stand. Uh, that came as a, a consequence of the freedom, life, rights, resources of the people right here. Uh, who's upon whose land we stand. The fact is that we have a peace movement, an anti-war movement that can exist and that does not even address the fact that there have been concentration camps in this country for the longest period of time that they call reservations, that Indian people live on. Something is wrong on that and the existence of the Black is Back Coalition is a criticism of a peace movement or anti-war movement that cannot deal with that reality. It is a criticism of a peace movement, an anti-war movement uh, that, uh, that uh, treats uh, lightly or not at all. Uh, this war on the borders in this country where uh, Mexican people whose land uh, 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 was recently stolen by the imperialism that's responsible for Indians, if you will, living in concentration camps, where the people who cross across that illegitimate border uh, that separating a part of what was previously the U.S., uh, uh, previously Mexico, uh, the people who crossed that border, the Mexican people who crossed that border, are uh, characterized as illegals, uh, where even special armies and police organizations have been created for the purpose of not only keeping them from crossing the borders, but actually killing people in the deserts through in Arizona and, and various other places in this country on a regular basis. Where is the peace movement? Where is that movement that talks about peace, that identifies what is supposed to be war and addresses itself to it? Why can't it address that question? Where is the peace movement? When it comes to the fact that we live in this country that built on the backs of black people, African people, this country where all the wealth created on land stolen through labor stolen, where, where, is, the, where is the peace movement that cannot address the reality <coughs> that right now there are more than one million African people rotting in prisons on any given day. And over a period of time, millions and millions cycle through the prison and jail system in this country. Where is the peace movement that demands of Africans and others of us as a condition for being supporters of our struggles, that we have to be sufficiently nonviolent, sufficiently pacifist? Where is that peace movement that can stand up without demonstrating its own hypocrisy, that while demanding nonviolence on us, do not respect nonviolence enough? that they will return all the resources stolen violently from black people, from the Indians, from the Mexicans. Something is hypocritical about that. So we want to know where this peace movement is. We say that it cannot be for peace. We cannot look at a peace that simply is stopping everything in place. That the reality is that the disruption of the peace, the primary disturber of the peace in the world is imperialism, a social system. The Black is Back Coalition is a criticism of the traditional peace movement, our existence, the traditional anti-war movement. We say that it's not enough just to be, recognize those uh, struggles, those questions that disturb the consciousness, uh, that disturb the comfort level of white people in Europe or North America as war. That war abounds, that every time we look up, and we see uh, Amadou Diallo or Sean Bell. Every time we look up and see police murder in the streets of this country against our people, we are looking at war. That when we look at the poverty of the masses of African people whose labor built this country, we are looking at war. This is war. Where is the peace movement that cannot recognize the war that's being made against Africans, Mexicans, so-called Indians, and vast majority of other peoples around the world? There's something wrong with that kind of peace 
movement, that kind of peace. So the Black is Back Coalition is a criticism of that notion. We're not interested in peace uh, just when it comes to dealing with issues that make North Americans, Europeans, white people uncomfortable. We live in a state of permanent discomfort. Every time a child of ours leaves the house and is gone for more than 50, late for 15 minutes, we have to wonder whether that child has been captured by US military forces that call themselves police or killed in the streets of this country. That is a reality that we have to live with. And so we want to see a real peace movement happen in this country. We want to see a real anti-war movement happen in this country. We want to see a peace movement, an anti-war movement that is so willing to, to, for individuals so willing to lay their bodies down to, to destroy a missile uh, that's going to be used uh, in some other country, uh, an anti-war movement, peace activists who are so willing to lay their bodies down in tank in front of tanks that's going to be deployed in Afghanistan or Iraq to be able to do the same thing with police precincts that where the police cars are moving into the African communities in this country. We reject a notion of peace that excludes the war that's been made against our people and that's been made against the vast majority of the other peoples around the world. Karl Marx said he was not a nationalist. He was not an African. He said that when it comes, said that, 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 that this thing that he calls primitive accumulation played in political economy a role that is equal to original sin, the equivalent of original sin in theology. In other words, the whole thing that we are talking about, the whole imperialism that we are talking about, rests upon the oppression of black people, of people who have suffered colonialism and do suffer a form of colonialism all around the world today. That some people talk about imperialism as something that is a consequence of capitalism having developed to a certain level. In fact, V.I. Lennon used to refer to, to imperialism as capitalism that has become rotten ripe. We say that the imperialism that we look at is something that gave birth to capitalism itself. We revert back to Marx's perception that it was primitive accumulation that gave rise to capitalism and that this primitive accumulation was the enslavement of African people. It was the attack on China, uh, China by the British, the so-called Opium War. It was the attack on the Vietnamese by the French that brought all kinds of resources for more than 100 years into France uh, from stolen resources uh, from, uh, in the form of drugs for them primarily. It was the war that was made against indigenous peoples throughout the Americas. It is the existence of America itself of what we call America, that is primitive accumulation of capital that gave rise to the capitalism that people say that they are opposed to. We say that yes, imperialism is capitalism, but capitalism is a consequence of what we recognize as imperialism, which is the war against the rest of us. <clears throat> so, the other thing that we would mention is that most of the so-called anti-war activity is activity that is directed at a particular policy of imperialism. For example, the war against the people of Afghanistan, the war against the people of Iraq, the war against that group or that group represents a particular policy of imperialism. Imperialism is not a policy, it is a system. It is not good enough just to be against this policy or that policy. You'll be running around in circles forever because war, the policy one time was to attack Vietnam against the war, against the war in Vietnam. And this, before you even rested from that, then imperialism is attacking people in Nicaragua against the war, against the war in Nicaragua and over and over and over again. But imperialism breeds war. And war is a consequence of the existence of imperialism. Imperialism started as war. The existence of America started as war. War on the indigenous peoples here. War on what we call the Mexican people. War on black people. That's how it all got started. 
So it's not good enough to be against a particular policy that makes you uncomfortable. Sometime, someplace, we got to stop and say, hey, we must oppose imperialism itself. As a social system, it has no redeeming qualities. When we are able to do that, then we are not confused by things like the representative of imperialism, whether that representative is a white man from Texas or a Negro from we don't know where. It doesn't matter who, who it represents. It is a social system. It doesn't, it, it will allow a Negro, an Eskimo, a Mexican, anybody to represent as long as it preserves the social system of imperialism. What we are looking at, of course, with Barack Hussein Obama is white power in black face. It had to disguise itself because the oppressed peoples around the world had risen up and said that we will not be, suffer white oppression any longer. And so they gave us a Negro, gave him $700 million for his campaign, gave him the largest sum of money that any candidate has in the history of America has ever had, and then told him he represented us. And look at us. I think the minimum wage in this country is what, $7 and what? And 25 cents? And since we got here, and think about this. We, we, were, we, were, we were here enslaved since 1619 directly in this country, and now we get a $7.25 raise. We make $7.25 an hour more than we did four or 500 years ago. Thank you, America. So, so we say that we want to have this conference on the other wars, not just what makes you uncomfortable about Afghanistan, where the U.S. is murdering people who don't even have enough bread to feed their children. That's the reality. Not just what the U.S. is doing in Iraq, where they invaded, occupied that country and lynched and lynched and lynched uh, its president and then put some Uncle Iraqis uh, in place. Not just uh, uh, something that disturbs the comfort level of white people. But there is a greater reality and it is closing in on the world. And it is a profound crisis that the social system is experiencing today. It is a crisis that the U.S. and all the other imperialists are trying to stem trying to stop. And so the Black is Back conference on the other wars wants us to look at imperialism itself. And we won't be able to spend as much time in this meeting as we would have. First of all, we lost an hour to the marathon. And we lost more than that because there are people still on their way here uh, and troubled by the marathon. Um, but the reality is that there's a whole world it's a world where half the people on earth live off $2, two US dollars a day. It's a world where if you're looking at the continent of Africa, the richest continent on earth in terms of natural resources, south of what they call the Sahara Desert, people live off $1 a day. That's half the resources that a cow gets for subsistence in Europe, right? It is a world uh, that uh, sees in some places, and particularly on the continent of Africa, people working all day just for one meal, all day, every day, wake up in the morning just and work all day just for enough to feed themselves that day. It is a world uh, where uh, that imperialism itself has defined the reality for everybody. 
for the Mexican people who, when they come across the border, are characterized as illegals by the people who stole the land. Wait a minute. <laughs> it is a war that criminalizes the Mexican people when they come across an artificial border. They are called illegals by the people who stole the land, who came here uninvited by any damn body, took the land, created uh, an, an organization called the state, legalized themselves, then legalized the theft of people from Africa, worked for free, made that legal. Slavery was legal. You know that, don't you? Anybody getting away from slavery broke the law. That was the reality. That was the war. And this is the war that we have been fighting now against imperialism along with the vast majority of the peoples of the earth for more than 500 years. So the Black is Black Coalition wants to bring our attention to that. It's calling on Africans in particular to recognize our responsibility to be organized. It's calling on everybody to recognize that to resist is just. It is just to resist. It is correct to resist. To resist oppression is natural, normal, and everybody who's oppressed ought to be engaged in resistance. We, the Black is Back Coalition, is not confused by what we see happening uh, in, in North Africa, in the Middle East. We know that even in the Middle East and all over the continent of Africa, the borders that we look at are borders that were created by Europe and imperialism to divide us, to take our resources, and, and, and they have served to confuse everybody since that time. We know that Egypt, that they're in Tunisia, that they talk about is Africa, regardless of how, what kind of maps they've drawn and how they want to define that reality for us. And that for the longest period of time, the imperialists have been able to control uh, Tunisia to control Egypt. They had their own uncle, uncles who were in charge there. But the oppression of the people around the world has grown to such an extent that even in an Egypt, where the U.S. has given more than $1.2 billion a year in order to maintain this oppression of the people there, that even in Egypt, the people have been so oppressed that they have, they have risen up and they've pushed at least uh, off balance uh, the established setup that's there on, 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 in, in Egypt. And so uh, it has happened in Tunisia. It threatens the balance of power in that region. Already the balance of power in the world is being challenged all over every day. That's why they hate Hugo Chavez and Evo Morales in South America, because it's no longer their backyard. People are taking back their resources for themselves. The balance of power is shifting all over the world. That's why they hated Comandante Fidel, because the balance of power, people are taking back their resources. That's why they hate the resistance in the Middle East, because people are taking back their own oil, their own resources. That's why they make you hate Korea. They talk about Korea to justify U.S. troops being, um, U.S. military's particular naval forces being sent into the China-Asian area. They, uh, because they, it is not Korea that they found such a big problem with, it is China. Because China is challenging them for, for hegemony in that entire area and they need to be able to justify sending in no more naval uh, forces to combat China, who they are also having to fight on the continent of Africa. That's why one of the reasons AFRICOM is so important because China is the, growing, the fastest growing economic influence on the continent of Africa. And U.S. and Western imperialism intend to dominate Africa forever. And now they have this rapacious Chinese hungry capital that's challenging them there. So they have an AFRICOM there. The balance of power is shifting all around the world. And then when they attack Iraq, as they did, overthrow Saddam Hussein after they had used Saddam Hussein to attack Iran which had been their policemen out there for a long period of time because they put the Shah of Iran in power. And then they used Saddam Hussein after the, after they, the Shah was overthrown and the, and the mullahs came to power. The, they, they used the Saddam Hussein to attack the Iran, uh, to neutralize Iran. Either, they didn't care which of them got destroyed because both of them were too powerful in that region. 
<laughs> and of course, what happened is the Iranian Revolution came out even stronger. Then the U.S. attacked Iraq. And when they attacked Iraq and moved Saddam out of the equation, then Iran stood supreme in that area as the most powerful force there. Not, on, not only because Saddam Hussein was gone, but when they got rid of Saddam Hussein, they unleashed this minority, this majority Shia in Iraq. And the Iranians are Shia too and had more influence today. Iran has more influence in Iraq than the U.S. has in Iraq. It's the Iranians who will say if there's going to be an election. It's the Iranians who say uh, who's going to be elected in Iraq, not the U.S., and that's a problem as well. So balance of power is shifting all around the world. Imperialism is standing on its last, imperialism as we know it, is standing on its last leg. It is shaky. It is shaky. Don't be fooled by those Tomahawk missiles that they're firing from submarines against Libya. That's a desperate imperialism. That is not a confident imperialism. That is not an imperialism that is in control of the world. That's an imperialism that's trying to hold on to everything that is stolen over the last 500 years. So the balance of power is shifting. Now, with Egypt gone, now look what you have in the Middle East, in the North Africa region. You have Iran, who stands strong. Egypt is weakened. You've got an isolated white nationalist, illegitimate settler state of Israel. It's occupied Palestine, where you've got those people who have stolen the land and they have been the primary protectors of the whole oil and strategic interest of imperialism, with the secondary protectors being what? Being all those reactionary Arab regimes. But now the Arab regimes are being overthrown one after the other by masses of people exposing Israel. Now you, you see that the balance of power is shifting. Iran stands strong. Libya has always been a force that is loyal to the Palestinian cause, has always been a force that stood up uh, 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 against the state of Israel and therefore against U.S. strategic interests. That's why the tomahawks are flying in Libya. Not some nonsense about, about that this Negro uh, uh, Bar uh, Barack Hussein Obama is talking about he, they're saving their people from slaughter from Saddam. If you wanted to save somebody from slaughter, then stop the police department in New York City. <laughs> if, if, if you want to save somebody from slaughter, then stop the puppet regime in Yemen for gunning people down in the streets of Yemen every day. If you want to stop somebody from slaughter, then stop the puppet regime in Bahrain for killing people there who are trying to overthrow U.S. imperialist interests there. No, they're trying to stop history. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to stop history. That's what they're trying to do with attacking Libya. I can't predict what will be the outcome of this situation in Libya, but I can predict this. Imperialism is over. As we know it, it is a spent shell. It shall never rise again. The genie is out of the bottle and it can't be put back again no matter what they do. So, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Sister Aisha, she really runs this show. And she's been back there frowning at me and throwing up all kinds of signals telling me to shut up <laughs> and get down. But I want you to support the Black is Black Coalition because this is the best thing that's happened to us since the 1960s. It has brought together all kinds of forces from all kinds of backgrounds and, and coming from all different persuasions. But it is a coalition that recognizes that it is impossible for, Af it is, it is possible for African people to unite around the principle of self-determination that we have a right to be a self-determining people, that we have a responsibility to be a self-determining people. That is, it would be a complete failure uh, to African people around the world, to African people suffering in Haiti from U.S. and, and United Nations, which is to say U.S. Uh, uh, oppression and domination, right? It, is, uh, it, is, uh, it would be sacrificing the, our responsibility to our brothers and sisters throughout South America, the Caribbean, etc. It would be sacrificing our responsibility to our allies, our comrades, and other people suffering from imperialism, the Mexican people, to the indigenous population, the other parts of the indigenous population. Nobody even talks about the Indians if they're not in the room. 
You understand? And this is the land upon whom we stand. The indigenous peoples, the Mexicans, the Indians, it's their land. It's their land. I got a homeland. And uh, I'm fighting for it every inch of the way every, every, and every day that we can. So I want to thank you for coming out. I want to call on you to support this coalition. Let's build a real, genuine, anti-imperialist movement. Because African people are going to take back what belongs to us. We want our happiness, and we want every damn thing that's been stolen from us over the last four or five hundred years. We're coming to get it all. We just like the people in Palestine. We just like the people in Pakistan. We just like all those other people who are oppressed and who are now rising up to take back their resources. So we are hoping that, that we can build a genuine anti-imperialist movement. We are not going to have a movement any longer where people can call peace. And that's not going to be permissible. It's not going to be permissible to have another so-called anti-war demonstration, have another so-called peace march that does not deal with the oppression of African people here and around the world, that does not deal with the oppression of the indigenous people and the Mexican people here. I'll, if I have to do it by myself, I'll disrupt them. I'll bust them up. <laughs> Say, how the hell are you going to have peace when everybody else is living in the worst kind of misery? So, so I want to thank you again. And uh, we've got some incredible forces who are going to be presenting. I see uh, Comrade Christian uh, from Union de Barrio, uh, the Mexican National Liberation Movement, who has come in from San Diego. And uh, there's some bad comrades out there. I'm telling you, uh, uh, we've had like a 25-year uh, uh, relationship with these comrades, and they've taught us uh, a lot uh, because you don't know enough when you just know about your situation because your situation is informed by all the other factors that's out there in the world in the same struggle that we're involved in. So, Christian, uh, we say welcome. Good to see you, compa. And, uh, uh, of course, there are other uh, uh, leaders of the, uh, of the Black is Black Coalition who I've already mentioned prior to their arrival. Uh, some of them are shown, have shown up, Sister Afia uh, Mungaza uh, out of South Carolina, uh, <laughs> typically uh, armored, uh, ready to do it. And uh, so thank you so much. And Sister Aisha, I will relent. Uhuru. <laughs>